Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is once again Matt reporting for the Sin Bin and coming with another quick video here. So, in my previous video, I was kind of, you know, talking about the top 15 picks and I stopped at number 15. And you guys might be wondering why the title is somewhat misleading. And I can tell you that the reason why is because Cole Caulfield at number 15 necessitated more time that I had to make a single video out of it. So yeah, he drops to number 15. It's a big surprise. I've seen many you know, websites ranking him as high as number four. Uh, Craig Button had him number four, and he's the TSN scout. Bob McKenzie, I believe, had him between seven and nine, which is still very high when you compare where he dropped to. So Cole Caulfield, he's 5'7", 163 pounds. Do you think that scouts him to play with it? It definitely did. He will attend the University of Wisconsin in the fall. He set a record for goals with 72, and that's not a typo that I'm reading. He had 72 goals, and he has 126 goals in 126 games in two seasons with the USA Hockey National Team Development Program under-18 team. And that team, if you guys haven't heard in my past video, that's probably going to go down as one of the best hockey national development teams there was so many players in the top 15 that came out of the system. There's obviously Jack Hughes, there's Travis Zegras, there's Turcotte, there's Cam York, and now there's Cole Caulfield. Why do I think he dropped this far? He dropped this far. For me, it's an obvious answer, his size. I think there's somewhat of a size bias that's still going on in the NHL. Throughout the years, for the past, let's say, two or three draft, that seemed to be going away. We've been seeing players like Mitch Marner get drafted. We've been seeing players like, you know, prior to that, Johnny Goudreau get drafted. And even the Oilers most recently, they drafted Kaylor Yamamoto, who's this five foot eight, really just small wee man. Now, I think that after the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup, given that this is a copycat lead in yada yada yada, a lot of players are trying to go bigger now. And I think that might explain why Cole Caulfield dropped in the hands of the Montreal Canadiens. And if you are a Canadiens fan, you are just through the roof right now. You are jumping all over the place. I think that this is a steal. And as you guys can see right here, I'm on the NHL website. I'm going over, you know, the the the, the analysis here. And they ranked him, the NHL Central Scout ranked him number eight among North American skaters. So if he's ranked number eight and he drops 15, and with my third degree math knowledge, that is seven spots, I believe, third grade. Um, that's a somewhat of a steal for the Canadians. Now, he has 202 shots on goal that led the whole program, and his 100 points in 64 games were second to Jack Hughes's 112. Now, Caulfield's 14 goals for US at the 2019 Under-18 Championship tied Alex Ovechkin for the most in a single tournament. So his season points, his season goals, he broke Phil Kessel's record. And now in the championship, he ties Alex Ovechkin. That's definitely good company to be with, Ovechkin and Kessel. Do I think he's going to be good as Ovechkin? No, of course not. They're two completely different players. Ovechkin is a man. He's you know, six foot three, 230 pounds. This guy is five foot seven hundred and sixty three. And that's a good point that I wanted to say. I think that as Canadians fans, you guys and we, because I'm one of them, I'm gonna include myself, we need to not get too overhyped. As much as he said in his interview, he said he wants to play in the NHL next season. At 163 pounds, that's gonna be near impossible. I don't think the five seven is that much of a big deal. I think the 163 pounds, he just needs to add more muscle. You don't want to see him get pushed around. And as I go on in the NHL analysis, they say, the Canadians must have been thrilled that the best pure goal scorer in the draft was available at number 15. And at number 15, Cole Caulfield's small frame won't prevent him from succeeding. Caulfield at right wing on a line with center Jesperi Kotkaniemi sometime in the next two seasons has a potential to be a productive scoring attack. Man, you're just salivating at the mouth hearing this. Caulfield playing on the wing with Kokinemi. And, you know, 
their depth at center right now, it's really deep. They have Code Kanyemi. They have Paling, who had three goals in the shootout winner in his debut. They have Ryan Suzuki, or my apologies, Nick Suzuki coming up, who it's still undetermined whether he's a center or a right wing. Right now, he's still listed, listed as a center. But the Montreal Canadiens needed help on left D. Do I think that they should have chose a left-handed defenseman, say, for example, a Thomas Harley, who was later picked by the Dallas Stars? Do I think they should have picked a left-handed defenseman instead of Cole Caulfield? No, absolutely not. And I'm going to tell you what the reason is. The Canadians are picking at 15. No one you pick at the 15 rank is going to play on your team next year. They're going to have to require at least a year or two of seasoning in the juniors. So, a year or two in the future, how will we know the Canadians will still need a left-handed defenseman? I mean, a lot can change in a year or two. You know, Alexander Romanov is going to come out. Uh, Josh Brook is going to come out. They might acquire someone through free agency. They might acquire someone through a trade. They might not need a left-handed defenseman. So... When that all boils down to it, just pick the best player available. And with Cole Caulfield, he is the best player available. Now, we got the draft right here, and it was announced by none less than Shea Weber, who is a BC native, and of course the draft happened in BC, and they decided to have him announce Cole Caulfield as the next Canadian pick. As you see on the side here, they just have a really big history of choosing American players. And, you know, Trevor Timmons, who's the scouting guy of the Canadians, he just loves them. He's born in 2001. It's still a little weird seeing people that are born in the 2000s. Um, but I, I sometimes forget these guys are just kids. 64 goals, uh, sorry, 64 games played, 72 goals, 100 points. This guy is going to be something, and l let's just listen here. There's the rest with a great release and a hard shot. It's from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Again, another multi-sport athlete despite his diminutive size. This guy is going to go to Wisconsin. So, so I'm going to cut him off right here. Let's, let's just look at the side. His strength are his speed and shot release. When you're five six, foot seven, you need to dominate in one area. We see Johnny Goudreau. He dominates with his hands, his skill. Same with Mitch Marner. This guy, it seems like his calling card, his domination is his shot. That release is lethal. Room to improve is his size, which I kind of think it's stupid because he doesn't, he can't really improve that. He can pray to God to make him taller, but it's not like it's something he can work on. Hopefully by now until maybe when he plays with the Canadians, he would grow an inch or two. Five foot nine, you know, it's different from five foot seven. There's a little bit more inches there. And also improve his D zone. And if you're playing under Claude Julien, granted, if he's still there at the time, you know that he emphasizes D zone play. So let's just hope that he can improve that too. But his NHL potential is a top line, not a top six. This is a top line score comparable to Alex DeBrinkit. So let's explore that comparison a little bit. Alex Dabrinkit. I think that it's a good comparison in many ways, but I think that it's also different in many ways. Let's start with how they're similar. Obviously the size, 5'7". Alex Dabrinkit is also listed as 5'7". To be honest, I think that's kind of a stretch. He might be more of a 5'6". But they both score goals. Dabrinkit had 40 goals this past year. Playing with Patrick Kane, that's going to help. But Cole Caulfield is also known for scoring goals, breaking Phil Kessel's record. Now, they're also similar in the sense that in junior, they both played with really, really good centermen. Debrinkit played with Connor McDavid and Cole Caulfield playing with this year's number one pick, Jack Hughes. Do I think this is a bad thing? I think that in some sense, it may inflate their stats it may make them look better than it is. But if we look for Debrinkit, he's no longer playing with McDavid, unless McDavid is somehow on the Blackhawks and I'm missing something. But he's not playing with McDavid. He's still racking up a lot of points. And yes, I acknowledge he's still playing with Patrick Kane. But my point is that Cole Caulfield, in his press interview afterwards, I think he put it best. 
He said, yeah, sure, I'm playing with Jack Hughes, but he wouldn't have got as many assists if I didn't put the puck in the net. So the kid's got confidence. He's got a little cockiness swagger to him. And I really like that. And you know what? He does got a point. I mean, passing it's one thing, but he had to put it in the net. That also requires a lot of skill. And I think that his comparable to Dabrinkit in that sense is really good. Where I think it differs is that Dabrinkit in junior was more of a pass-first person. He evolved as a goal scorer when he came to the NHL, but in juniors, when he played with the Barry, or was it the Erie Otters, he was more of a pass first mentality. Let's follow the video. He's going to score a ton of goals, and then he's going to come out early. I think he's going to play. He's got some work to do, but his release and the power on his shot for a little wee guy, amazing. A little wee guy. With his brother uh, Brock, and as Sam mentioned, models his game after Alex to bring it. And so he's all smiles, guys. And again, you got to feel for the guy. Seeing him drop and seeing the stress on his face was kind of hard to see. And then when he finally got drafted by the Canadians, I know a lot of Canadians fans were happy from what it seems. There's not too many people disappointed. You could just see the release on his face. Just all of that stress was relieved. And, you know, good for him. He... He said in his press interview afterwards, he doesn't really mind dropping. I don't know if that's true or not. He might just be, you know, lying for the camera. He's not going to make, you know, cry in front of us or anything. But he says it's all about being drafted. And in the end of the day, end of the day excuse me, he got drafted by the Canadians. He's all smiles. And you can see in this little package here, he's got an incredible amount of skill. So it's not like a few a few years back when the Canadians drafted Code Kanyemi. That was really controversial. There was that epic lady in the crowd who was shocked. You could see it on her face. And a lot of people were disappointed thinking that Code Kanyemi taking him at the third spot was a little bit of a stretch. And you know what? To be honest, I might be one of them. Now, for Cole Caulfield, I think it's the complete opposite. I think that he's a steal. He absolutely dropped in the lap of the Montreal Canadiens. And this fan base should be nothing but happy with this pick. So what do you guys think? Do you think it was a good pick? Do you think they should have went with someone else? Maybe a defenseman? What do you think he's going to project to be like in the NHL? Please let me know. Put your thoughts in the comments below. As per usual, my name is Matt, signing off.